Welcome back to Breaking Point, everybody. Today we are breaking down you Darvish. But you Darvish the pitcher, not you Darvish the hitter. And I'm actually facing you Darvish as the hitter, and I get absolutely dominated. So this is going to be an explanation as to why you Darvish is so difficult to hit, what makes him so good, why he generates so many swings and misses, and... I'm probably just going to ignore how bad my swing is. I'm not going to break that part down. We'll just stick to you for today. Let's get into it. I call this crisscrossing the corner. You know, tunneling is a crazy concept. There's no way a big leaguer swings at that. If this ball's one to seven, he absolutely crushes it. Boom, that's the breaking point. All right, first we're going to play it all the way through. So let's check it out. Seven pitches goes by pretty quick. Strike. Strike, chase, all right, that, that was pretty quick, that was pretty ugly, pretty, made pretty short work of me, so let's break it down, um, going to the plate, Bottom of the third, no outs, I'm leading off. I just figure that I'm probably going to get a fastball first pitch. I'm not intending to swing uh, at all. I'm going to take a pitch, but he throws me a, a cutter. What's this guy doing? He's pitcher on pitcher crime right here. Uh, yeah, anyway. He throws me a cutter first pitch. I'm like in my head, well, what is going on? He's really not going to throw me a fastball? Anyway. Uh, then he comes back with an even better cutter. And this pitch looks, and I'm gonna, this is really what I want to get into is the, the tunneling aspect of this, but this looks like a fastball. Uh, and then just at the last second is a cutter. And I'm out in front of it and take a terrible swing. And uh, yeah. So then the next pitch is the slider that looks like the cutter and then breaks off way off the plate and is extremely hard to hit. So I have here an overlay. And this is the overlay of the cutter, the second pitch cutter that ends up in this location, and the third pitch slider that ends up in this location. And uh, this is going to be this is going to be interesting for you guys to see. So this is something that I do. Uh, I actually have this exact same setup of pitches in my arsenal, and I try to play this game all the time. I try to land cutters in this part of the zone and sliders in this part of the zone because they look exactly the same. Um, and cutters here are very tough pitches to do any damage on, uh, you know, in the middle counts to get to two strikes. And then it's almost impossible to lay off sliders in this zone as a hitter in two strike counts because if it is a cutter or it is a fastball, uh, you take strike three. So it's a very, very effective game. I know that you plays this all the time. I knew that going to the plate. I knew that's what he was going to try to do to me. And I couldn't see it and I couldn't hit it. So here it goes. First thing that we need to talk about is the how similar the body is here. Um, oops. This release point is, you know, if that's a ball, I mean, this is like one ball width off. So it's within two inches. Uh, some research studies have shown that hitters uh, if, as long as the ball is within three ball widths, they can't really pick it up. So, you know, a ball could be, let's say, this far apart. A release point could be like this far apart, and hitters can't use that information. They can't see it or use it in real time. Uh, but one of the things that makes you so special is the repeatability of the delivery and how close everything is coming out of his hand. And then watch how these pitches track to the plate. I mean, they're almost identical as far as their trajectory. They both start up. They maintain, you can see they maintain the exact same spacing. Same spacing, same spacing, same spacing, same spacing. Now they start to differ, and here they start to differ. But they're not differing vertically. They're still the same spacing vertically. It's just that one of them ends up here as a strike, and one of them ends up eight inches over here in the lefty batter's box. And I swung at this one and missed it. 
and then I swung it what I thought was the exact same pitch, but it ends up even further outside here, and I miss it by a lot. Now, these pitches, it's really interesting when you have this setup, these pitches are spinning almost the exact same. One of them is spinning with the axis directly in line with the line of travel uh, and no upward tilt. That's this pitch, it's right here. Uh, the, the slider, so that's the cutter that's spinning like that. The slider is spinning with the axis directly in line with the line of travel, but tilted up in front. So it's very hard to see the spin. Not that you can use spin anyway, like you can see it in flight, but your brain doesn't register what it was until after you've swung. So you can't really use it, but you can see you can see the spin, you just process it after the swing, but it's very hard to tell the difference in these two spins because one of them is pointing directly at you and one of them is pointing directly at you, but just slightly up. And then they move drastically different, eight inches of difference. Uh, so I think we'll scroll back actually to the, the pitch that I swung at and you can see how much I actually miss this ball by. My barrel gets to like here in the zone and I mean, I, mean, I miss this ball by eight inches uh, more. I don't know. It's bad. I'm nowhere close to this ball. Uh, great, great job of executing this tunnel. I'm just going to play it through at full speed so you can watch the tunnel because it's impressive how late that ball disappears and moves the other way. Uh, the only reason that this pitch is a little bit higher than the location of this pitch is because of the speed difference. 86 is in the air three miles. In, it's a little bit less time uh, that's in the air. So gravity has a little less time to act on it than it has to act on this pitch over here. Uh, and that's why you get a little bit more depth on the slider. But most of the difference here is just lateral movement. I mean, that's a large amount of lateral movement to happen in the last half of flight when hitters have the least chance uh, to make any sort of swing changes. So then go to the next at bat and I figure, all right, uh, he's going to throw me some off-speed stuff because he dominated me with off-speed stuff last at bat. I still haven't seen a fastball yet. I got cutter, cutter, slider for a strikeout. So there we go with the slider and I lay off it. Uh, I have no intention of swinging here. Uh, bottom fifth, two outs, nobody on base. I have no intention really of swinging in this, in this entire bat. Uh, I'm looking at this as like, let me just get back to the dugout. Uh, if I draw a walk, great. Let me get back to the dugout and get back out there and pitch. We have a 3-1 lead. Right now it's more important for me to be ready to pitch than it is for me to try to get on base and start a rally with two outs. So that's my mindset. And so I auto take this and he misses the zone. And then he comes back. I think this is actually the cutter. I think he comes, I think that's the cutter at 85. And then he comes back with this cutter at 85. This is the straight one. Uh, it doesn't break laterally at all. So again, an auto take there. I'm taking until I get a strike. And then he comes back with the first fastball that I've seen all game. And it's 93 up above the zone. Uh, I saw it up there and I'm like, oh, I can hit that pitch. Uh, and I was on time with it. Just way above, uh, way above my barrel. And then he comes back. I'm assuming that this pitch is going to be a slider. You know, in my head, I'm like, okay, I got a swing up here. I'm going to throw something that looks like that and ends up over here and get a swing and miss. This is going to be my slider. Um, after he punched me out on this slider and saw that I would chase off the zone, uh, chase out of the zone and off the plate away, after he got me to swing through this cutter right here, uh, in previous at bat, I figure I got to be getting something slow going out here because that's kind of what I would do. Uh, but he makes the correct decision, realizes that I'm late on this pitch. And so he just adds speed to it and he throws 96. I freeze because I figured that's going to break. And I take a ball that's well within the strike zone, which I'm okay with because, again, I was just looking to get back to the dugout and uh, get back out there to pitch. And... He's frustrated because I think he gave up a run on a homer this inning. I think this is a crazy game. He punched out like 12 people and gave up three hits and all three of them were homers or something crazy like that. Um, so anyway, that's the, that's the sequencing. But this is the really interesting part. This overlay is crazy. So I'm a, I'll play it through for you and then we'll talk about it. Okay. There are four pitches on the screen here in this overlay. Look how little difference there really is. This is spanning, these are four pitches spanning two separate at-bats. So an at-bat in the third and an at-bat in the fifth. Look how little difference there is on the release point. 
Look how little difference there is. These, this is four pitches. They're out of his hand and they all look the exact same. They all look almost identical. You can see a little bit up here. You can see a little bit over here. Uh, it's hard to pick up all four of the balls on the screen because there's so many of them. But these are all identical. I can't tell the difference as a hitter on what's coming out of his hand. They all start off flat. They all start off flat. Look at this. Now you can finally start seeing two balls break off. The front two, these two over here are fastballs. And the only reason you see any difference in this camera angle is because they're advancing to the plate faster than the two off-speed pitches behind them. But they're the, from, the, from the hitter's perspective, they're at the same exact height. And now you see these two pitches go, you get a fastball here, you get a fastball here, you get a slider, or you get a cutter that ends up here. And if I, that's the pitch that I took, uh, I believe, or is this the one I swung at? No, that must be the one I swung at. So you get the cutter that ends up there, and then you get the slider that ends up way down over here. And these all look the same. How many frames out of his hand do they look the same? One, two, three. Maybe you start seeing some difference in fours, really, where you see it. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 40% of the way to the plate, they all look exactly identical. And even longer from the hitter's perspective, because it's one thing to see tunneling and overlays from center field perspective from this angle, you know, looking at it this way. It's a whole different view when you're looking at it from the hitter's perspective and looking at it towards the mound. Uh, and I can tell you, in these at-bats, I could see no difference in height or, I mean, it's hard to see any lateral difference. Most balls have very similar lateral flight to start with. Uh, but height difference is the biggest thing. You know, hitters will see the pop of the curveball or they'll see like the downward angle of a fastball. And so there's a large difference here in height. Uh, what these pitches show is there's no difference in height. Look at that. They're all overlaid right on top of each other. And this is, this is four pitches of the seven that I saw. <laughs> and I only, I only put four on here because I can't overlay all of them. I saw one cutter that ended up here that looked like this fastball, almost identically, height-wise. And then I saw one slider down here to start in a bat that I didn't swing at that looked almost identical to this fastball that's a strike. And almost identical to the one that I swung at over here. So I bet you if I overlaid all seven pitches, the only one that would look slightly like it had a hump was the, the second pitch, um, where he, or the first pitch, I guess, of the, of, that I saw the day when he threw a middle-middle cutter at 83. That probably had a little bit of a hump, and I might have been able to distinguish, to distinguish it from the ball that ended up just up here above the strikes on the fastball. Other than that, six of the seven pitches I saw came out of this exact tunnel and looked exactly the same, and then ended up in drastically different places. I mean, look at where these pitches end up. You have down and away quadrant with a cutter, 85. Up and away quadrant with a fastball, 96. Up above the zone, fastball, 93. Off the bottom uh, diagonal quadrant of the zone with a slider, 83. These all look exactly the same. How is a hitter supposed to pick up which pitch he's swinging at and what speed it is and what location it's going to be in? This is impossible to decipher. This is right in the middle of Yu's dominant second half run that he had last year when he was I mean, if not the best pitcher in baseball, one of the best pitchers in baseball, probably was top five in the second half. You think he didn't walk a guy for like two months or something? Uh, and it just, it was crazy. He was throwing seven or eight different pitch types. He was throwing them all for strikes, not walking anybody, and they all tunneled perfectly. This is unbelievable. This is extremely hard to hit, especially coming from a pitcher that can go 96. He was up to like 98 in this game, anywhere from 92, let's say, to 98 with, his, with a four-seam fastball. And he didn't even throw a couple of the pitches. He has a, he has a two seam that starts. Let me, let me get this release point right. He has a two seam that starts here and kind of comes back to this location, but it has this like kind of bend to it. He has a split finger that starts in this same tunnel at the same location, the same height, and then ends up kind of in this zone over here below the zone. Uh, he has a curveball, a big curveball, and an, a big even he has a big curveball that goes here let me undo let me draw this in uh in yellow for you guys he has a big curveball that humps and ends up here and an even bigger slow curveball that humps up above that 
and ends up for a strike. So he's throwing all these pitches. Now the curveballs are the two that you can see that have a, a drastic difference in height, but that serves a good purpose. It serves to freeze you. You, you see one level of pitch, uh, pitch in, pitch out, and all of a sudden you see something up above that, and you're like, oh, ball. Nope, not a ball. It's a strike, and you freeze on it. But he's got all these other pitches. He's got a four seam, a cutter, a slider, a splitter, and a two seam that all come out of the exact same tunnel. They, they look the exact same, four frames to the plate, and then they all split off and do drastically different things. It's crazy. When he can throw all of his stuff for strikes and he's constantly executing to the right parts of the plate, he's almost impossible to hit. You have to sit on a pitch and hope that you get it. But he's, he's someone that'll throw seven pitch types uh, and he'll throw them like 14% of the time each, between like 9 and 18% of the time each. So you can't decipher which one you're going to get, and they're all different speeds. It's impossible. Now, I'm a bad hitter. <laughs> so there's no doubt about that. I'm a terrible hitter. But understanding it from the pitcher's side of, of things, understanding what you is trying to do, I feel like I have a really good idea of what you is trying to do to hitters because I've patterned much of my arsenal and the way I attack hitters off of you, Darvish. I watched you when he came over to the league in 2013 and 2014. Like when he was brand new in the league, he he was unbelievable. This was the tunneling stuff that I think there's. He was the first one that someone made a tunneling gif of. Like I think it was against Albert Pujols. It was definitely against the Angels, where he had like seven different pitches and they all split off and went all sorts of different ways. I've watched him nonstop. I've patterned a lot of my game after him. I stepped to the plate knowing exactly what he was going to do to me, knowing exactly what pitch types he had, and I still had no chance. That's crazy. So pretty cool to see what I'm trying to do on the mound from the hitter's perspective. It's not very often you get to do that. You don't get to face yourself, and it's, very often, it's not very often you get to face someone with almost the exact same arsenal that you have um, and get to be you know, dominated by the arsenal playing out exactly how you try to have it play out against other hitters. Pretty cool experience. Love facing, uh, love facing Darvish. Love matching up against him. Hopefully I get to do that a lot more. Uh, now that we're in the central together, I, I anticipate that happening. So it's always fun matching up against him because it's, I know how good he is and it's always a competitive moment for me trying to go out there and, and get the best of him. Um, I think I, I faced him a couple times. He actually put the ball in play and hit a couple balls hard off me. I, uh, I, I was kind and I threw him a fastball uh, that he whacked uh, to shortstop. He hit it pretty hard, but he's out. But uh, yeah, that's the matchup with you, Darvish, and that is today's breaking point. So... Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. I, I love looking at this tunneling stuff and, and why it's so hard to, to pick up pitches. And he's one of the best in the league at it. So if you could do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Leave me a like. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this type of video. You want to see more of me hitting, less of me hitting. I want to see less of me hitting, but whatever you guys want, let me know. If you could let anybody that doesn't know about this channel know about it, that would be great. I am trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2020 so I can give more free information and baseball content to you, the fans. So help me spread this channel. It would help me out and it would help a lot more people out as well in the entertainment and training space. So without further ado, that is it for today. That's you Darvish and me hitting. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great, great day.